Lily, a woman I believe from Taiwan, had joined a tour group that was going to Iceland, and she was on her own, but of course met, met a number of people, and they had a visit to one of the volcanic canyons. Well, when the group got back on the bus to go back to the hotel, she was wandering about and enjoying the extraordinary formations and spent some time by herself. And then when she realized uh, the delay, she got an Uber, I suppose, and made her way back to the hotel, changed after being out in all of that weather, and came down to the lobby where they were gathering all the people with the tour group. Uh, they were very concerned because there was a missing person in the group, and she was wondering, well, who is that? And they said it was an Asian woman, five foot three, and we're going to go down to the park and search for her. So she got on the bus, and she goes for the search. And after hours and hours, she began to realize, wait a minute, I'm an Asian woman, five foot three. Maybe they were looking for me. So she went back to the tour director, and he couldn't believe it. They spoke to the police who had done part of the search. They couldn't believe it, and she finally convinced them she was the one. There she was searching for hours for herself and didn't even realize it. Sometimes aren't we like that? We're busy about something. We've got part of the story. We're all in a huff. And then we realize, wait a minute, the answer is right in front of me. Now think about the Magi who were scholars from the East. Remember, the Israelites had lived in Babylon, in the Babylonian captivity, and then they were taken over by the Persians. That was the Iranians taking over the Iraqis, believe it or not. They left one legacy to those ancient peoples, which was their scriptures. That's what they brought in their captivity. And in the prophecies, there were many that pointed to the coming of a Messiah, like the first reading from Isaiah, chapter 60, one of my favorites, which says, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and upon the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth, thick darkness, covers the peoples. The Lord will arise upon you and his glory will be seen upon you and nations shall come to your light and kings to the brightness of your rising. That prophecy is fulfilled in the arrival of these Magi, the wise men or the three kings that we celebrate today because they took Faith and science, or as Pope Benedict called it, Fides et Ratio, one of his great documents, together, not separate, but together. They studied the scriptures of the faith of these ancient peoples, and they studied the science of astronomy. See, the ancient people didn't have GPS, as you know. They traveled through the deserts at night because they knew the stars. And interestingly enough, this star of Bethlehem arose around the year BC. Now you might say, well, wait a minute, that's four years before Christ. However, if you study the calendars, the calendars are about four years off. So Jesus was born four years before Christ, oddly enough, right? Uh, the calendars had to be adjusted, the Gregorian calendar, the Julian calendar, over the centuries and realized it's about four years off. So when you do the science, and you look at the year 4 BC, two very interesting phenomena. One is that there was a supernova, so a birth of a star, okay, which would be very bright, which may have been that which guided them. In addition, there was a convergence of three stars that would have also had a brilliant light. Whichever it was, these wise men saw the sign, the omen, this was it, a fulfillment of what they had studied from these Hebrew scriptures that had been left behind in the East, and they made their way. They made their journey. But they arrive, as you would think. Remember, there was no, they couldn't Google who's the king in Jerusalem, who's in charge. Couldn't get any of that information. But they knew there was a king in Jerusalem, so surely he will know who this newborn king would be. They make their way to Jerusalem, and unfortunately, they meet one of the worst kings in history. If you look at Herod, 
he did one of two things with you. Either he bought you off or he got rid of you. He did that, by the way, he got rid of his wife, he killed her, killed numbers of his children, he killed in-laws, and just about anybody that would come in his way. So they now come, and notice the prophecy, it said, clouds cover the people. Herod was one of those thick, dark clouds in Israel's history. So they arrive, and oh, now he's very concerned. A new king, naturally, this murderer is going to get rid of anybody that rivals him. And they go to the prophecies, and sure enough, the prophecy says Bethlehem. So he sends the wise men off to Bethlehem, and he waits to see what they find. Well, you see, you know, you hear what they found. The scriptures say that when the light to Bethlehem, they saw, they believed, they knelt down, and they worshipped. These are the scholars. These are the scientists of the ancient world. Remember? People try to pit science and faith against one another. Here you have the scientists kneeling down with faith and worshipping Jesus Christ. It was also the first ecumenical meeting. Think about it. Two Jews, Joseph and Mary, have the Jewish Messiah in a feeding trough and Gentiles, not of Israelite origin, come and kneel down to worship with them. Jews and Gentiles. Paul talks about it in that second reading. He had been given a revelation. By the way, the word revelation comes from epiphany. Epiphany. You know, we used to, when you have an aha moment, clicks, we used to say, I had an epiphany. That's right, because something is made manifest to you. Another way to put it is it's unveiling the mystery. And that's the epiphany, today, right? The first manifestation was to Joseph and Mary, obviously, at the birth, Christmas Day. The second manifestation was to the shepherds, the simplest, humblest of workers in Bethlehem were the shepherds. They got it. They worshipped and adored. And then finally, it was the scientists who came, astronomers from the east, to worship the King of Kings. And the question for us today is, which will we worship? The King of Power, like the Herods of the world today? Or will we worship the King of Peace? It was prophesied he would be a wonderful counselor, he would teach us, and he would be a prince of peace, because peace is in the center of his very being. We began the year yesterday, the new year, with a world day of prayer for peace, and the only way this world will ever know peace is when it comes back. That is my prayer for the year 2022. Psalm 149 says, sing a new song unto the Lord. We need to do something new in a new year. We can't keep doing the same things over and over again and expect a different outcome. I believe this is the hour, this is the day, this is the time for us to pay attention. What was Marius? She listened and obeyed. A disciple is one who listens and obeys. Mary was the perfect disciple from the very beginning and throughout her life. And she's interceding for us to do what she and Joseph did, to do what the wise men did, which is to acknowledge the light of Christ and then bring that light into this land covered with thick clouds, as Isaiah said, thick clouds of darkness. Let me give you one example. Just a few days ago, Archbishop Desmond Tutu of Cape Town, South Africa died. And you may recall that he was one of the leaders in the fight against apartheid, this very racist system that had clouded South Africa for decades. Anyway, when they were leading, as he had just become Archbishop of Cape Town, they were going to have a big demonstration where against apartheid. Well, the government shut them down. You can't have it. So he said, all right. 
he took them into the Archbishop's Cathedral. And as they were in the cathedral now, they were gathered, they were going to mass, pray, and the security forces of the government came and lined the walls of the cathedral, all around the walls. Now what does he do? Well, if he was afraid, he did the evidence of it. And as he began his message, this is what Archbishop Tutu said. Quote, this system of apartheid cannot endure because it is evil. And then he pointed to the officers standing along the walls. He said, you are powerful. You're very powerful, but are not gods. And I serve a God who cannot be mocked. So since you've already lost, I invite you today to come and join the winning side. At that moment, the whole congregation stood up and applauded, and the officers were so befuddled, they looked at one another, and they walked. The light shone in the midst of the thick clouds of darkness and evil. And that is what I believe needs to happen this year, this day, this time in history. So many thick clouds of darkness have covered the earth. So much evil, so much suffering. And we must stand with the light of Christ to bring hope to our own people and hope to the nations. The great message that the wise men give us is changed. Notice, they do not go back to Herod. They get it. They're now inspired by the light of Christ and know that this Herod would only destroy the Christ. So they go on a different route back home. We too, when we encounter the light of Christ, the beauty of Christmas must be changed and take a new path, a new route. Pray as we begin this new year for the illumination of how you will be changed and how you will take a different route such that the light you receive in Christ will shine through you to those around you. I conclude with a meditation from a group called Dayspring about the Jesus who is made best at the Epiphany. Jesus is the Savior. Receive him. Jesus is the shepherd. Follow him. Jesus is the king. Serve him. Jesus is the Lord. Trust him. Jesus is the life. Enjoy him. And Jesus is the Christ. Worship him ever and ever. Amen. <laughs>